The new movie thriller Conspiracy Theory, Mel Gibson's character fears that conspiracy lurks everywhere. Gibson should know, in real life, it took a conspiracy to convince Julia Roberts to be his co-star. I recently talked with both of them about working together on this project where sparks were definitely flying. Don't breathe, don't breathe. Was this the first time you worked together, the two of you? Mm -hmm. What was it like? Fabulous. Caper. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Just nod, nod and smile. Mel Gibson and Julia Roberts are together for the first time on film in Conspiracy Theory. They are an unlikely pair. Gibson plays a New York cabbie obsessed with bizarre conspiracy theories. He is unbalanced, bordering on psychotic. Roberts is a government lawyer who should be afraid of Gibson's eccentric character, but instead finds but instead finds him strangely sympathetic. It's an interesting relationship between your characters in the movie. Um, yes, very complex. Very complex. <laughs> Shows up at her office how many times? And oh, I don't know, eight, twelve. Eight, twelve. Yeah, it's kind of stalking, really, isn't it? It's a it's a gentle version of stalking. Yeah. It's almost kind of weird. The paranoia that runs throughout the film actually began before the filming. To get Julia to sign on to the picture, Mel and director Richard Donner had to use some gentle persuasion. They stalked me. They called my machine incessantly, leaving messages. What did they say to convince you? They, well, they, they had me locked in a hotel room, and I don't think they were going to let me leave until I said yes. Then the minute you said yes, is it true that the door bursts open and a brass band walks in? This is true. Uh-huh. Yes. That's great. Which, that's, that's serious confidence, too, right there, having the band in the closet, these poor men, like, waiting. You signed on to the script rather early on, um, mm. and, and with the producer director about who t the female role should be. What, did you always think that Julie would have been perfect for this? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I thought, would she want to do this? You know? It was one of those sort of things, like, gee, I hope she'd want to do this. And uh, um, when her name came out, I said, wow, that's a great idea. Having worked so hard to get Julia on the set, Mel decided to greet his co-star with a present. I read all the stuff about all the practical jokes you guys played on each other. You gift-wrapped something for her. Oh, a small dead animal. Really? It reminded me of being in the sixth grade, and every day at lunch, this one boy named Chris, and I know his last name, but I won't say it because I don't want articles about him in the paper, he'd come up every day and he'd go and walk away. That was his way of flirting. That meant he really liked me, according to my girlfriend. According to my girlfriends. Or, or it meant he really hated you. Nope. <laughs> no, I think it meant that he liked me. In the sixth grade, it means he likes you. And also, I heard in the shower, um, is, was it in the shower scene when you're in your apartment? Yes. I'm in my apartment, and I'm growing increasingly paranoid because I'm spending too much time with this man in the film. Increasingly paranoid. And so you might also be in real life. life. <laughs> and, uh, and I hear a noise, and so I... I get out of my bed and I go searching around my apartment to find the evil doers that I think may be lurking. And I open the shower, open the shower curtain, and found an evil doer. Found Joel Silver in the Joel shower. Silver. Jumped out the and scared me. Producer. Yes. I think there's a scene in the movie where you're showing her the special handshake. Yes. Uh, the secret handshake. And while you were shooting this, you did something else pretty awful. Yes. Yeah, we just got some disgusting hair gel and a cockroach and some tapioca. A live cockroach? No. But a big one. Synthetic. Oh, my God. Big. Now, see, that one would get me more than but the rat. But the thing is, because he's, it's touching he's you. clever. Yes, it, it, it did get me. It was horrifying. But Mel's very clever because <laughs> just the, the plastic fake cockroach, it's not really going to... All the hair goo and everything where it's all sticky and gross, and he took my hand and your mind reels with the concept of all the different things that it could possibly all the different things that it could possibly be coming from you Mel. could feel it then oh yeah 